Hey, everyone, welcome to another episode of the 808 Podcast, podcast where I interview business owners, CEOs, and whoever else I feel like for questions in eight minutes and eight seconds because 808 looks like Bob. And here we go. Question number one in a few sentences. Tell me who you are and what do you do? Hey, Bob. Thanks for having me on. Uh, my name is Daniel Inamala. I am the Chief Investment Officer at Sarsen Funds, which is a crypto-focused registered investment advisor. Boom. Right to the point. Love it. Question number two. What advice do you want to share? Go. Uh, I wanted to help people better educate themselves on cryptocurrency as an asset class. Uh, typically, what we've seen in, in the mainstream media is a lot of misunderstanding about why crypto is important and where people see that there's significant value, uh, both as an asset for an investing purposes, as well as uh, a mechanism for democratizing financial services. Uh, so one of the big things is that most of the education obviously is not on books, given, given the industry is so new. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the up-to-date information can be found online. So a couple of the resources that I suggest people follow are crypto native newsletters, such as Decrypt, uh, The Block, uh, the Blockworks company also has a, a great news source as well. Uh, and, and Cointelegraph and Coindesk are probably the other sources as well. And they do a great job of having crypto literate people uh, unpack recent news, do a lot of research articles and help people understand why this is an industry today. The second thing um, is to look at social media. You know, a lot of how the cryptocurrency industry has blossomed is by people in the industry educating each other. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I love the industry so much is that everyone's uh, so collaborative and, and willing to work together to try to you know get the industry to grow significantly. So uh, Twitter is a great resource. If you look at some of the, the top names in the industry, for example, Anthony Pompliano is, is an individual that I follow that provides great resources and great intelligence. He also has set up uh, an educational resource website as well. Um, Reddit is, is a great uh, resource as well. It has, you know, targeted um, you know, users on various cryptocurrencies as an asset, uh, and you really get into the weeds. Obviously, there's a lot of garbage on, on both of these sites, but if you dig in and find the right individuals, uh, you're able to really focus. Uh, and then the Sarsen Funds website, you know, we do a great job of posting resources online for uh, for prospects, everything from the basics of cryptocurrency to, uh, you know, more advanced strategies and up-to-date news uh, is always available online. The final way is to you know, go on podcasts uh, like this one. Uh, Around the Coin is a great podcast. Um, Lisa Shen uh, also has a, has a great podcast uh, uh, on, online as well. And, and Anthony Pompliano has uh, a, a podcast uh, that they do. So if you just search it on Spotify, you should be able to get a good laundry list um, of really high quality educational products. Uh, and those are the three primary ways to, to get yourself educated on the industry. Perfect. So I have some crypto opinions. And I want you to yes. tell me true or false on that part okay. there. It, it, again, because you're obviously more of an expert than I am, so I might be wrong, okay? Sure. Number one, I personally think Doge is a better long-term investment than Bitcoin. And here, and here's the reason. People are talking about a $500,000 Bitcoin, and right now it's at 45K. People are talking about a $1 Doge, and right now it's at like eight, seven to eight cents. So there's a lot more room for growth when it comes to Doge. Sure. Opinion, true, false, or what's your opinion? So I would say as a long-term investment, I love Doge as a platform. So as a, a person that loves the industry, I don't think about value relative to the dollar value of the tokens. I think about value with respect to the difference it makes in society. So as of today, Bitcoin has made tremendously more value just by being available uh, all over the world. It also has a highly secure network um, that's, that's better and, and has, a long, has withstood uh, the test of time as well. Uh, so when you're considering the upside, you also have to consider the risk uh, in, in that particular investment. You know, Dogecoin, Dogecoin, while it's an awesome technology, uh, you know, has been, you know, the, the reason for the price increase is primarily related to pumping or, you know, really media news outlets. So it's hard to really determine whether or not you could hit the dollar target, which is certainly a target that's been uh, uh, that's been manifested by by sort of these social media advocates and and Satoshi street bets and, and people like that. So myself, I, I prefer Bitcoin. I think Doge is an incredible technology with lots of value. Excellent. Again, if I'm completely wrong, you can tell me I'm completely yeah. wrong. That's again that part that's a, there. That's a great question yeah. to ask. Se second thing, I have an opinion. If you start hearing about Bitcoin on Facebook out of the blue. That's because it had a huge spike. Not the best time to invest. Wait a couple of dates. True, false. What's your opinion? 
So myself, I'm a long-term investor. So I do think that it's a great way to uh, learn about Bitcoin. I think you should take the opportunity when there is a social media burst to educate yourself because the industry is very complex. There's a lot of subtle nuances and a social media blip on Facebook isn't necessarily the best reason to make an investment choice. So what I would say is use that opportunity to learn um, and it might be a good investment opportunity. I think over the next 10 years, you probably have a lot of great places to enter the market, whether it's 40,000, 10,000. Uh, my personal belief is that you know the asset is set to grow. I don't have a particular price target, but uh, anytime right. now is it's probably a good time to invest. Perfect. Let's get to question number three. What other top CEOs, business owners, and influencers that you know that are successful just like you that you want to give a shout out to? Go for it. Absolutely. So Sean Clark, uh, sorry, Sean Clark is one of our trusted advocates at Alternative Core Solutions. Uh, he's built a great business just selling investment products to, um, you know, to, to financial advisors and, and really helping explain convoluted concepts uh, to those advisors. Uh, so he's a he's a great friend and partner. Uh, Will Peets at 100 Acre Ventures is one of the smartest people I know on earth. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, CIO. Um, he's taught me a lot about Bitcoin and uh, what the value proposition that underlies it. Uh, and so I owe, owe a great deal of uh, you know, gratitude to him. Uh, the last guy I'll point out is Neil Van Huys, who works at Block Fills. Um, and so he's just done a great job building a very unique business focused on cryptocurrency mining, uh, which personally, I believe that there needs to be a lot more attention paid to uh, because it's sort of the backbone of the industry. Perfect. Perfect there. So let's get to question number four. Final fun question for minute 44 left. Tell me about your first sale. So my first sale was when I was in middle school and I was obsessed with Pokemon cards. And my brother and I were, were, were really big collectors back in the day. And we got to the point where my mom said, you have three binders full of these. What are you going to do with them in 10 years? And so she's like, why don't you take this as an opportunity to try to sell some? So we set up uh, four cardboard boxes on our front lawn, painted the front of it to say Pokemon sales. Uh, and we're there for the weekend. And we were successful in selling two cards uh, for a grand total of, I would think, about $3, if I remember correctly. So hey, it was, you, uh, you, it was you made some profit, though. Made some profit. And uh, yeah, I don't know where the cards are today. They're probably worth a lot more. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they are. Hey, you got 57 seconds left. Promo time. Ask me a question. Talk about the weather, whatever. Go for it. What gave you the idea to start this podcast? I told my coach I've always wanted to do a podcast. She said, great. Yeah. You have 24 hours to schedule your first guest. <laughs> so all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm scrambling. So I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I didn't even have a website or anything. And I'll always remember the first person I asked, like, what's your website? I said, well, here's the yeah. website, you know, it's 808podcast.com, but we just got, uh, I just bought the domain 15 minutes ago. And he's like, all yeah. right, how many, how many listeners do you have? I'm like, you're literally the first person I've ever asked. <laughs> so he's like, all right, that's cool. You know, so, cause I was honest about it. I'm like, I'm done because I did, you know, yeah. just started like 20 minutes ago. So that part there, Hey, you got 10 seconds. You want to do a quick promo? Yeah, so Sarsen Funds, please check out our website. Uh, our mission is to uh, educate potential investors about the cryptocurrency industry. We also have a suite of financial products, but our most important goal today is oh, to- Oh, there it is. That is that's the time okay. right there. You pulled it off, Daniel. Right. You know, four questions in eight minutes and eight seconds. Why is it eight minutes and eight seconds? Because 808 looks like Bob. Exactly there. Say your website real quick. Sarsenfunds.com. In the description, it's magic there. Daniel, thank you so much for being on. Tip of the hat to you. Thank you. You're welcome. And for everyone else watching or listening, make sure, actually, I'm legally required to tell you to like, share, comment, subscribe, thumbs up, ring the bell, whatever the heck the social media network tells you to do. You all have a good day now. Talk to you later. Bye.